there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Hello everyone and welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve and tonight we'll be discussing episode one of season five of Killjoys. Holy crap. It's kind of weird because it doesn't seem like it's been five seasons or well, four other seasons. Right. It just feels like it's all meshing really well. But it's so sad that it takes so long for us to see this awesome show. But I'm yes. so glad it's back. Yes, absolutely glad it's back. I will tell you, I was upset that there was nothing at San Diego Comic-Con. They didn't even have them there for a signing. I'm like, oh, come on. Really? Not that I could get in because, like right. I said, that's like impossible. But. <laughs> But it's like, I was really surprised. But at yeah, least we got this. They're actually giving him a final season to wrap everything up. You would think that that would be the time to have him out there. Right. I really feel like that would have been great. You know, really bump up kind of support. If this is the last season, normally these type of shows will be there for their last season. But there was nothing. I mean, unless it was in a room that I just did not see. But... I heard zero right. for Killjoy, so I really doubt it. So that's kind of sad. That would have been awesome to have them there. Yes, it would have. But let's talk about some ratings for this show, shall we? All right. Episode one brought in a 0 0.09 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.324 million viewers, making it the 69th overall cable show for the day. Talk about not getting any... Um, advertising budget to promote the show hey well a bunch of us nerds were in san diego during this so it's yeah. kind of hard i'm guessing the live plus, plus seven. seven we'll see a major improvement let's hope so yeah <laughs> we were all hoping they were going to be there live and in person but yeah. alas that did not happen all right let's jump into episode one run yala run dutch realizes the lady has put westerly under a collective delusion in a world without memory, nothing is what it seems. Oh, that sounds so so awesome. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> well, I guess that depends on your viewpoint. Yeah, that's you're a true. Johnny fan. Oh, yeah, this is great. He gets the girl instead of dad. <laughs> it was a little confusing because things just seemed so weird. Because when we left everyone, we had seen them get out of the green and... Uh, apparently the lady crawled out of the green now the hand that we seen i think we were all assuming was anila but seems to have been the lady right and seems to have caused a rupture in space time lurching us into an alternate universe yes and this is a universe that i'm not too happy on i mean some of it's okay but not all of it right this alternative johnny is an engineer at a green factory what? Dav is a bounty hunter on the search for Jack. Again, what? What? Yeah. Because Jack's a fugitive. What? I'm going to say that a lot this episode. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a spoiler. Johnny and Dutch are married and have a child. Said child is fugitive Jack. And who has to protect him from the killjoys? Well, that was a shocker, too. Yes, it was. Uh, we'll get all to get to all that in a moment. Look, I'm getting so confused because it was so like, what is happening right now? Right. Because Dutch is working the bar that Pre once owned, and apparently she owns it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is like all mixed up. I'm so confused. And Dav comes in to ask some questions, and she ends up spiking his drink. Which, Great. of course, she's going to because he's asking about her son. Yeah. yeah, she did not have a good poker face in that moment. No. 
Not a right. normal Dutch, that's for sure. Johnny gets back from his job at the factory, and him and Dutch go hop aboard to have a ship to snoop around. But apparently that quote-unquote bad customer sugar that she had put in his drink didn't work because Dev intercepts them and proceeds to ask them questions. Right. And of course, you know, without guns, they're able to discuss Jax, which was interesting. Right. But it was this hilarious is- to see Johnny and Dev stand off against each other. You know, Johnny does get a weapon and Dev just rips it right out of his hand. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, you just tried to shoot me. The gun doesn't work anyway. He's like, the safety's on. Instead, he ejects the magazine. He's like, what are you doing? You suck at this. Yeah. <laughs> but as they're talking, Johnny is like, I wanted Jax to stay on Crush because he'd be safer. Well, at least we think he would be. But of course, Dutch wanted him back in Westerly where he belongs with his family. Well, you can see both sides with it. Right. But, but you know, we- it's, it's completely different than what you would expect oh, right. Johnny and Dutch to say. So it's like, who are you? <laughs> but when we hear what's happening to the kids and how they're being taken to crash, right? it's like, what is happening? This is really crazy. What are they doing to them? Right. I, but then, I don't think I want to know. Right. Then something weird happens. Well, kind of weird. Weird for our crew, I guess. Dap takes Dutch aside to ask her some questions, and you know, they start flirting a little. And when they touch hands, Dutch all of a sudden starts having like these flashback memories to her and Dav together. And it's like, right. whoa, okay. <laughs> and she's like, hold on, hold on. Whoop. Yeah, okay. Freak out. Oh, right. And he's like, well, I, I didn't mean to overstep and touch you. <laughs> <laughs> she's thinking that's what it was. Cause apparently those memories weren't flashing in his head. Right. But I thought it was weird because as you see Johnny, like walking around the ship, all of a sudden, the ship starts talking to him, and he kind of freaked out, and he gets a nosebleed. Well, and the thing that I caught was that he had this little wrist bracelet on, and it lit up. Right. Like, what the hell is that? And he's like, oh, I'm contaminated. I have to get it in the shower. It's like, okay, what is happening? So yeah. are we not actually in an alternate universe? Is something else happening? And it kind of has to be that way, because suddenly we see... Zeph, who apparently in this day and age is, well, a street urchin, I guess would be the best way to call her. She has a little computer nest, though. And she's trying to hack into the factory's mainframe and pirate data. And she has, what was it, like a weather station and all? And, right. And uh, apparently she's not very well liked right now. Because they at some point call her stinky raincoat. It's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> that's not good. No. Let's keep moving, because we get to bounce around and see all sorts of weird things. Right. So, Dav's on the hunt for Jax, of course, or at least information. And he corners Garrett. Oh, hi. So, obviously, he's here, too. But who the heck is that he's with? Yeah. (laughs) Apparently, his fiance. Yeah. Wasn't that a bit odd? Right? And he's like... Yeah, I'll catch up to you, honey. I know him from way back. He's just screwed around because he's like, oh, I got three warrants out for you. It's like <laughs> His wife is going, what the what? He's like, dude, what? He's like, well, I can make these warrants disappear, but you need to help me and you need to get me information. And Garrett just kind of breaks down. And he's like, oh, this is all I know. Giving him information and fade to black on them and back to the bar. I am just like, okay. So, so far, we've seen our little crew, Dev, Johnny, and Dutch, Garrett, and Zeph. Zeph, And I'm like, hey, so we're still waiting for a couple other people to pop up. At (laughs) least. And I'm starting to get worried. Yep. So, anyway, back at the bar, we had kind of the same thing happen to Dutch when she kisses Johnny. Right. So... (laughs) Kind of weird, I guess, you're kissing the brothers. Now, all of a sudden, you're going back in time, and you know, it's like, whoa, whoa, what happened? <laughs> the reaction was so awesome. Right? <laughs> Johnny's and like, I, what did I do wrong? Hello, Johnny. Johnny, you try. You do. You're so cute. But it's 
really sad when you start seeing what's happening. And then I'm like, how is he going to deal with it as it progresses? You know, because oh, yeah. if she's having these flashbacks, obviously he's going to have some at some point, right? You would think. Unless he's so happy in this moment, he's not going to try to break out of the delusion. Right. Oh, that makes me sad, too. Yeah. But Dutch kind of freaked out because of it. Goes to hide in her room. And what do we see? The little red box. What? How the hell did that get there? Exactly. And when she touches it, there's a lot of memories hitting her. And then that's when she really starts getting a nosebleed. And then the bracelet, which apparently is a radiation bracelet or something. Because yeah, it's saying you have to get to a decontamination unit now. Get to the shower now. It's like, okay. But everything's locked. She can't get out of the room. She can't bust the window. What is happening? Right. Is Dutch going to die right here and now? Uh, that ain't going to make the fans very happy. No, I just keep thinking it's something like in the one Resident Evil where it was like constantly being repeated. Right. At the beginning, and I'm like, what is happening? This is like some weird simulation, right? Yeah, a really bad Groundhog Day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because, oh, hey, here's another member of our little crew that finally waltzes in. Looking almost... I didn't recognize exactly. him. Exactly. Almost didn't recognize him. You had I'm to like... look twice to go, oh my God, that's pre. Seriously, till he talked? Yeah. I'm looking at, I'm like, who's this dude with this weird haircut? <laughs> I'm like, oh, hold on a second. He's a rack agent? Yeah. Excuse me? They just really like, okay, let's just throw these dice all over the table. Uh, this one will go here. Yeah, let's put this piece over here. It, it was crazy. Right. And hey, he's like, ah, uh, Johnny, we need to talk to you outside. Okay, that's great. Because Dutch is still having a breakdown because she can't get out. And she suddenly sees her entire past as a killjoy. So she's seeing what we know. Right. Yeah. And I'm honestly starting to question things. I'm like, okay, which is the delusion? Right. Like, are they going to throw us for like a total loop for the last season? And I was really thinking that they were going to do something like that. And I'm right. really glad that did not <laughs> they did what not. Happened. <laughs> but it was weird because nobody believes her because Dutch tries to tell Johnny. Because apparently after she is thoroughly, quote unquote, well, contaminated, not decontaminated. Right. She's contaminated yeah. because she has all her memories of her former life. She tries to tell Johnny thinking, OK, maybe he'll remember this. And he just thinks it's some weird sex role play game. Yeah. He's all for it. It's like, dude, really? And uh, Dutch is like, I'm going to get somebody who has to know. Well, Zeph seems to be a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Maybe she knows something. Maybe she's known all along. Right. But she doesn't remember her. No. And that's what I was confused about here, too. Because if Dutch was able to, like, break it by not dealing with the decons showers, why is Zeph, who apparently doesn't shower... Why is she not, like, remembering anything? It didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And no, it was a little curious that more than likely she's not one that hits the decon showers very often. Yeah, but she did. there may be other ways that the lady is keeping them memoryless. So, like, maybe the initial, whatever she did, it has got Zeph, like, on a border? Right. Or she's not quite... Over the border, so she understands everything, but she's not quite totally under the spell. Right. Yeah, she knows something's going on. Right. Because Zeph does not remember her. No. But she's like, but you know what? Somebody's messing with the climate here. Yeah. And why? Because it rains twice a day, like clockwork. Huh. Deep How does nobody know that? showers, and it rains twice a day. Right. Hmm. Wonder it's if like, that has anything to do with people not being able to remember their true selves yeah and i love it because dutch is just like we already terraformed this place it's like mm, maybe things are somebody's trying to change something because they're screwing with the weather yeah maybe it's some kind of massive gnosis <laughs> yeah you could totally just put a tinfoil hat on her it would have worked yeah. <laughs> exactly but you gotta love zeph she's right. trying she is because zeph takes dutch back to her creepastic lair <laughs> <laughs> and she's like let me lay out 
this hypothesis for you. We are under the control of an outside force. Okay, so theoretically, if you get off the moon, it should break its hold, right? Right. But pre and dab, have they never left? So it's like questions, questions. But how long have they been there? I don't think we have that information either at this point. No. Long enough for pre to grow a whole head of hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's a heck of a lot of hair. It's so weird seeing him like that, though. Right. So used to him looking like super awesome. And he just looked so like he was playing dress up. It looked weird. (laughs) Anyway, so Dutch is like, Zeph, I know who you really are. And she touches Zeph. And Zeph was like, why are you touching me? And I love it. She's like, were we lovers in a past life? And she's like, no. (laughs) Oh, that would have been cool. (laughs) Yeah. We know you got a lady crush. We know that. But no, it's not what this is right now, darling. No. Oh, but it was funny, like with that back and forth. But she at least gets Zeph on board because Zeph's like, everyone thinks I'm crazy. And you don't. Right. And she's just so relieved that somebody is listening. Yeah. You know, I I did love that moment. So let's jump back to Pre again. Because Dav wants to talk to him. Like, hey, do you know who this person is? And it's a picture of Dulcea. Yes. Because apparently she's been connected with Jax. And what the hell happened? Because Dulcea now seems to be like this badass assassin protecting Jax from all these bounty hunters. And I mean, did they switch personalities or (laughs) what is happening? (laughs) Like, I seriously was sitting there and my mouth was just open. I'm like, what? Yeah. Dulce is turned into Mama Hen, and nobody's going to get her child. Yeah, she's and, just as bad as Dutch is now. Right? And I love it. And at some point, Dad asked Pre about Garrett, and I'm like, whoa. Because we see some interaction, I think that's a little bit later, and I'm like, hold on. Yeah. Is something breaking through there, too, but not quite enough? Eh, it's possible. Well, apparently, Dulce is on a ship. That's orbiting the quad. And so somehow they find out and Dav teams up with Johnny and Dutch to go find Delsea. And I love it because when they get there, they split up and we see everything that's happening. Right. And we see Jack's like, okay, you're taking too long. All right, this is clear. Delsea's like, can you hurry up? I can only kill so many people. Right. <laughs> and she's saying, what if they don't come? He's like, no, they're coming. Don't worry about it. It's like, all right. I'm assuming he's talking about our trio. You would think, but... I was kind of worried at first. Yeah, well, not really sure. You know, they know that the lady's still after him. True. They don't know for sure what's happened to our crew, I wouldn't think, unless they've managed to gather intel that has informed them that they're back on Westerly. Oh, maybe. Maybe they have. Yeah, but they probably know that they don't know who they really are. They gotta know something. You would think. You would think. <laughs> I love it's like I say that, and then it's like, well, you know, then there's this. <laughs> so, they'll say end up finding Dutch first, who ended up going off on her own. And, of course, talks some smack, and then kisses her, just like, full on. She's like, I hate you. And I hate that you remind me of Anila. Yeah. And it's like, what? But then she, like, handcuffs her. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm getting more confused as this goes on. Yeah, well, you have, that's, you know, I assumed that the reason she handcuffed her to the table was she didn't know if Dutch actually really had her memories back or not, even though Dutch was talking like Dutch. Oh, yeah, because she does kind of mention, he's, she's like, well, we aren't affected like you guys are, so yeah. I we guess we'll see. We can't take a chance. Right, and I loved it because when Dab ends up finding Jack, He's like, your mom and dad are just, they're coming with. Don't worry. I love he's trying to be really calm and it just is coming off like really awkward. Yes. And I kind of wanted him to have a memory right here too. But if something was going to happen, because Jax is like, yeah, you're my dad. He's like, no kid, you're confused. Yeah. (laughs) No, dad, you're the one that's confused. Right. And well... He doesn't get a chance to have a memory because they'll see it kind of like zaps him. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty comical too. Yes. Like, hey, he's going down and takes his weapon. 
So and he gets we his ha- fingerprint. So yeah. it's like, okay. So you have Deb's fingerprint. You have Dutch's DNA because we see her like scrape it off her lips. That was yeah. weird. And so her and Dex are, are off and going. Apparently, you didn't need anything from Johnny. No. Because they didn't seem to care. Right. But he does say, I left an out for you. Like he tells him which way to go before he goes down. Right. So it's like, all right. So obviously, they're not trying to hurt them. Right. But what are they trying to do? You get DNA and fingerprints, and this sounds like a a Neela science project to me. Right? That's why I'm starting to wonder if maybe Neela did get out a different way then. Or Del Say is going to try to recreate her, but the green should be gone. Should be. Yeah, unless Del Say knows a secret stash that nobody else did, which is entirely possible. Right? I mean, Del Say has had plots and schemes going for a while. So <laughs> plots and schemes are the same thing. Right. Always. <laughs> so let's pop back down to Westerly. It's like, all right, let's go back where apparently all the shit's going wrong. But Zeph has apparently had a breakthrough. Yay! She tells Dutch, oh, yes, minds are being controlled. And those bracelets, they're actually monitoring your memories. And when you start to have too many memories of your real life, it goes off because your, I think it was cortisol? Yeah. I think is what she said, which maybe we can get some information on if that's right or not later. It starts going off and feeding into the bracelet, and suddenly you have to go to the decon showers, and that's what is causing people to forget. Right. Okay, now we have solid information. So Dutch is like, we got to come up with a plan to wake everybody up. Yeah. Okay, this sounds great. I'm scared. What kind of plan is Dutch going to have? Well, first she goes to Lucy, and apparently this is Dev ship, and, you know, everyone up to this point, I think, until we had heard that moment with Lucy and Johnny, thought it was just a Killjoy surplus ship, not, you know, anything specific. Right. And she's like, Lucy, I need your help. I know you tried to trigger Johnny's memories, and that's what caused his decon bracelet to go off, and that's what freaked out. And she's like, I thought I was hurting him. She's like, but I need your help. I'm going to wake him up. Where do the boys keep their secrets? Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, this could be bad. Yeah. <laughs> you really want to open that box up? <laughs> I don't know if you want to open that can of worms. But I think Lucy has ferreted out enough information at this point of what's going on cause that she had to A, play dumb. Right. And B, knew exactly what to use. Yeah. And this kind of hurt. Big time. Because it was so weird, because she goes to the bar, and apparently she had asked Pre, Dav, and Johnny to all be there. And they're looking at Pre like, why are you here at all? Right. She's like, let's listen to some music, and I have some. I have to talk to you. And it's like a hologram with Pre singing, and he's like, when the hell have I sung? And when yeah. did I look like that? Bad, yeah. That was amusing, but I'm yes, like, okay, <laughs> is it going to trigger enough? And I was kind of waiting for Garrett to walk in. Right. And like, that trigger him. But he started freaking out, and then she tells Johnny, this is so bad. You were married, and I'm not even going to go into it, because I'll cry. Yeah. <laughs> and and the whole thing with that, it and he starts having flashbacks. So you have right. Pree freaking out with flashbacks, Johnny freaking out. And then she tells Dav that you had the worst day of your life one time. Yeah. And got your whole squad killed. And he starts having them. And they quite, I don't even know the right word. It was like, well, I know I would have freaked out. They did exactly that. Right. And they run outside out of fear because all of a sudden it's your contamination. Right. Bracelet starts going on. Get to a decon. But she's like, no, it doesn't matter because I sabotaged all of them. But it's raining. And they just stand there getting drenched, looking up. And, and the calm like, just comes right over. Uh, when just watching that, I'm like, oh, crap. Because then it was like all children in the corn where they turn in unison. Right. And look at Dutch and they're like, we have a warrant for your arrest. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. wait a minute. Run, now suddenly Dutch, Johnny run. thinks, yeah, Johnny suddenly thinks he's like one of them. What is going on? But Zef rolls a flash grenade. She's like, hey, guys. Pow. So good. Dutch can get away. So Zef and Dutch make a clean getaway. Kind of, sort of. 
Yeah, just kind of. At sort least of. for a couple blocks because yeah. they duck down an alley and somebody else ends up taking him down and shot Zeph, which makes me wonder, okay, whatever the rain that's doing this mind control, apparently it's something that they can do and change in an instant. Right. Because everybody suddenly knows that Dutch is on the run. Yes. Yeah, and, Dutch and- immediately became the number one most wanted in all of Westerly. Right. And it's like, oh, well, that's not good because Zeph shot. Great. She needs medical assistance. Who the heck are we going to? Right. Yeah, there's no Potter on this version of Westerly. Oh, don't say Potter. (laughs) That about killed me when Dutch starts telling Johnny about that. That's why I kind of skipped some of that. (laughs) But obviously Dutch needs to help Zeph because she's like the only person who believes her right now. Right. That isn't after her. And then we Uh, get the major kick in the ribs as we go up to a ship orbiting the quad. And, oh, it's a little girl. Oh, no, it's not. It's the lady in a little girl's body. And? She's pressing Klein for answers about his daughters. And my jaw hit the floor. Where? What? How? (laughs) Yeah, I went through, like, all of them. I'm like. Yeah. What? Yeah. What happened? Explain that to I... me now. <laughs> right? I was very Dalek in that moment. Explain. <laughs> Explain. So this was crazy. This was totally a crazy ride. Yes. Because I did not see that coming. I mean, okay, I was hoping that Anila had been the hand trying to get out. Obviously, it was the lady in some form or another. Right. Or... Or we could be totally wrong. That was Anila, but in a different place, trying to get out. It could be. And, yeah, the lady is kind of, she got out somehow, but not necessarily in the same base that they got out. Right. Yeah. But it's messed we, up. <laughs> you know, when when they got out, the lady was in Anila. So it's like, okay, you know, that's why when you, we see the hand, we figure it's the lady. But maybe it was I forgot. I did totally forget about that. Yeah. Huh. Maybe it was, you know, I, that my assumption was yes, because nobody, you know, they had thought that Anila didn't make it out or who they thought was Anila didn't make it out. And right. And Klein wasn't getting out when it turned black that anybody that was in the green was lost, but mm-hmm. uh, apparently not. I guess we'll find out. We have to wait for the rest of the season. Looks this like was it's going to be a crazy ride. Oh, yeah. This was crazy. And speaking of crazy rides, well, we had somebody else on board because, Steve, we got feedback. Yes, we do. The one and only Fred from the Netherlands is back with feedback, so let's take a listen. Hello, Sean and Steve. This is Fred from the Netherlands with some feedback for Killjoys Season 5, Episode 1. I'm so excited that I finally can give feedback again for one of your podcasts. I didn't watch... Van Helsing, Night Flyers, Magicians, I do watch, but in the wrong season. You were podcasting about season four, and I just finished season one. Didn't watch Deadly Class, Purge, Krypton, or Happy. So, not watching Happy, but being happy to be back here. And what's even better, possibly we will meet in the end of October at the Urpapalooza convention about Winona Earp in St. Louis. The city where Steve lives. Not already for a long time, but he does. Such a coincidence. Okay, what did I do in the meanwhile? I did a lot of work for Brian and Ruthie for the Star Trek Discovery podcast, a Golden Spiral media podcast. I did a lot of screenshot work for them, the photos they used on the blog post. And I'm a regular on the Sci-Fi TV Rewatch podcast of Dave and Wayne. But it's good to be back here. And it's good to see Killjoys again. What is a big relief, of course, is that this is the last season of Killjoys and we will get a closure. I love this series so much that it would be an awful thing that this would have a cliffhanger and not a closure. So I'm very happy about that. Okay, going into the episode. The beginning of the episode was a little bit weird with all the people in other roles, and fortunately it became clear that it will be resolved and that they will get into their normal setting. 
I think it was nice for the actors just to have another role a little bit. And of course, seeing Dalsea back was also a big, big relief for me. And it's also nice to see Seth back, although not completely herself, but she is Sefi like enough. What I don't understand is seeing Klein back. Of course, I'm happy seeing him back because it's a great role and a great actor, but I think he was really, really dead, and perhaps he was moving around in the green, but here in the real world, on that ship with the lady who got out, that's a little strange. I don't understand it yet, but okay, this is the first episode. And the second thing is, of course, where is Anila? Well, she was in the green, but... The green is gone, the green turned black. I rewatched the last episode of season four to get into the spirit. And yeah, there you see that Dutch reaches in, in that green bath and then a hand comes out. I assume that is the lady's hand and not Anila's hand. So I wonder if we will see Anila back at all. Okay, that was all for this time. Greetings, till the next time. Fred from the Netherlands. Well, Fred, it's great to have you back as well, and definitely looking forward to getting to meet you in October. Yes, live and in person. I'm still up in the air because of my crazy work schedule, but I'm still working on it. Right. So, fingers crossed. (laughs) And we definitely uh, understand you watching some different shows. I recently binged Discovery, both season one and two, and definitely looking forward to season three, and of course, the new Picard series, so... I went through the pop-up, the activation in in uh, San Diego for Picard. It was really cool because they had all these props from oh, over the years with awesome. Picard. I got pictures. Those will be going up. Awesome. I'm awesome. super slow, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really neat, though, and I look forward to it. And yes, I'm probably the one person left it on the planet who has not seen the actual preview for it yet. <laughs> I don't know how it wasn't even playing there, but right. you would think it was. Yeah, it looks really cool, though, just from what I've seen at the the pop-up with what was in there. So I'm looking forward to that. And, yeah, Fred, of course, it's awesome that you're back back with us and you've done so much all over the place. So. Right. And with Sci-Fi's recent track record, we're really glad that Killjoys is getting to get a series closure instead of the alternative. Uh, that's for sure. Oh, gosh. I know. It's like, oh, this is so... How it would have ended. Yeah. They've and, done that to us a lot. Yeah. And I'm with you. I don't really think the dream world's going to last very long, seeing that we already got Dutch with her memories back in the first episode. It, uh, it's only a matter of time before she figures out a way to get everybody else back in line. I hope so. Yeah. And, and Delcea. <laughs> yeah. Shocker, though. I wasn't expecting her to be like that. Yeah. Black Widow all over the place on this. Right. <laughs> And, yeah, well, you heard what we said about Klein already. Yeah. I think we were all in the same boat. Like, what? Yeah. So, apparently, I don't know, it's like Bo Klein? We'll find out. Yeah, don't know. I hope. Yeah, don't know if... I wouldn't think the lady would be torturing herself, so... That would be awkward. Yeah, really. So, I don't think that Klein is the lady, so... I don't... Mm, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wine is there somehow. Where's Anila? Maybe yeah. she is alive. Yeah. And if not, Dr. Del Saya may find a way to bring her back. Frankenstein I feel like style. that's probably going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So once again, Fred, it's great to have you giving us feedback and looking forward to hearing from you again through this final season of Killjoys. Thank you Thanks, so Fred. much. All right. Now, obviously, you guys, you heard fred we love to hear from everybody so shoot us an email or like that you can shoot us a recording at sci-fi talk at fangirlzone.com go over to fangirlzone.com and check out the contacts page you can send us something on any of those ways and we'd just love to hear from you guys and while you're at it if you can rate and review us on itunes and every other platform you find us on because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us tell your friends and we do hope you're enjoying our podcast and for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I am Sean Fangirl-S. And I'm Steve. Did you just try to shoot me? And until next time. <laughs>